So I'm a little bit bummed because, as usual, I record all my little clips and time lapses and little narrations here while I'm building. And I was recording today, and when I went to when I start the next session, I usually check back at the last video to see if it makes sense or where I left off, so I can continue. And all my footage was gone. Like it just said, no media on the SD card. So, I don't know, I'm not a computer guy, I don't know if I can retrieve it, but uh, anyway, what we got done so far, I'll try to point out the few things that I thought were odd, or not odd, but um, basically we finished the yellow rods. there wasn't anything too tricky about it. I'm gonna push these in, uh, the, the brass bushings after the fact, and I think the only advice I have here is they tell you to push the spar once you click it all and, and, and get it drilled through here. And I had a hell of a time doing it because I got caught up on rib. Uh, let's see, this is left, so it would be rib, I believe two. And this one that didn't have the doubler in it. And what happened is I took a couple of these rivets out to try and loosen this front edge. And it kind of bent the rib a little bit, but I was able to straighten it all out again once I took it apart. But other than that, it went together pretty smooth. And I guess I can do video footage of the second one. And hopefully I won't lose that again. Such a bummer. And if I said aileron, I meant flaps. These are the flaps. Aileron's the next. Well, since I lost all of the footage from doing the flaps, I figured I'll do it for the ailerons. And I don't know why I did the flaps first, but I did. And to start, remember the tube that was too short for the uh, flaps? This was literally like, anyway, I'm gonna use this tube for the ailerons because the ailerons are shorter than the flaps. And I will show the process of how to mark the holes. I'm basically just gonna roll this on there, run the pencil down it. And this is nothing sp special, it's just a square edge I had laying around, can use anything. Randy even said a door frame will do. And yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, 
from that. Tight, so we don't have to go with overkill. Okay. So just basically just push down as this rolls up and we'll do it once ready. That's why we marked them on there. Yeah. Okay. And I is haven't, it the same on I, No, I haven't drilled them yet. Since I lost the footage from doing the flaps, I am kind of just going over it again with these ailerons. Really nothing special. I, I think I showed to get the line on the inside, I had the instructions say, what I would do is use a piece of 3 16 plastic. And I would just lay it flat on the table and then put the rib up against it and with a thin marker, not this one, but a, like a flare pen, you can just put the line on it, it ends up being two tenths in exactly. And that worked out really well for me. On some of them I went over <clears throat> with a little thicker magic marker just so I can see them. And the only other thing that I had is these were a little bit of tight so you can see where the, the markers are in there. Um, what's nice about it is you can kind of flip this up like that, sand them out, and uh, I had to open all of mine up down to the bottom, I made them one and three sixteenths maximum opening, and I just made them all symmetrical. The flaps I had to file a little bit too. And with that being said, they would have fit, but they make it a point to say that nothing should touch so I wanted them centered in the hole and obviously I'm not going to match the gap on top because that's much much bigger but uh, I just wanted them all the same then yeah we riveted in the inspection plate ring and my step now is to transfer drill all those with number 30s um, as I did with the the other one, watch it not be zero now. So I leveled it out and uh, 0.1 degree, that's usually I think good enough. 0 0.05 on the far end, even better. So I'm good with that and uh, gonna go do some drilling. And here we are, I got these all match drilled and Clicoed in. 
That's the uh, left aileron, and I'm gonna do the right. I have all the ailerons match drilled. You can see all the way through. And because I like symmetry, I mentioned before, I'm doing both of them at the same time. The right one on the right table, left one on the left table. And even though the instructions say to rivet this and then match drill, I ended up just clicking it. And now we're gonna do the fun job of taking it all apart again. Um, deburring it and then we'll be riveting it together and I also have two mysterious little Audi dents here that I'm gonna try and address I have no idea how that could have happened because even if it happened during the rolling of the skins they would be innies not Audis I'm guess oh unless something was on the tube maybe all right so I got some help and we're gonna do this. We got the <clears throat> the left aileron assembled. That came out really nice. Really happy with everything. And I was looking into the balancing part. It's gonna need a little bit of weight in there, but I guess you can't do that until it's painted. Anyway, here's the right aileron, and this is the outbound or outboard side. And I noticed just as I was ready to rivet it all together, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but there's this odd crease. So I took it apart again. And there's a crease that runs the entire length of this. Only on this side, not, not on the inboard root side after the control arm cutout. So it's very slight here. It's just more like a marking. And then it gets more pronounced as you get to the outbound edge. And here, if you listen to it, it almost feels like the fingernail catches, but it, it, it doesn't really. It's just a just a bend um, so my question is can I close this up is it just an aesthetic thing or is this like a compromised structural part and I suppose if it were to break and flip up here it could get the aileron caught on where I suppose the dap seal would be anyway I put a note out on the uh, Facebook builders group and hopefully I'll get a response I'm thinking since it's not scored, it's probably okay. And then the other reason I don't want to redo everything is because everything is match drilled, which now technically would mean I need a whole new aileron. I could probably save the bolt, but uh, all the ribs are match drilled, the spars match drilled, and uh, if I need a new skin, I'm kind of back to square one on this part. Oh well. So I put my post out on uh, Facebook and you guys are awesome because I got a bunch of uh, good replies, including one from Tony, directly from the factory, and Randy, and basically said, due to having the tube spar ribs attached to the tube, the flap and aileron are very tolerant of such minor surface imperfections. No worry, fly it. And I kind of agree. I don't, I don't like I said, it's not scored through the actual skin. It's just a, a slight, bend it's in an area that you'll never see once the plane is assembled i uh, will keep an eye on it and now i'm riveting it shut and that's today's project i also decided to, to just sand the area where this crease was 
Um, yeah, you see the mark, but it's absolutely not catching. I guess. I'm kind of just documenting this to remind me to keep an eye on it as we fly the airplane.